Hi everybody, I'm Luna and welcome back to Luna Earth Lectures. Since I started my channel, I've met a lot of wonderful people from all around the world who are curious about my country, Vietnam. It's so much fun telling you all about Vietnamese culture and history and food. And I have learned a lot about your countries too. That's one of the great things about the internet. We can talk to people all over the planet and explore other cultures without ever leaving our homes. And of course, I get a lot of questions about my government, which is understandable. I know that a lot of people in Europe and the USA don't know much about what it's like to live in a country like mine, which had a communist revolution, uh, which has hammer and sicker flags all over the place, uh, which the media portrays negatively all the time. So I don't mind when people ask me questions about my government. Of course you are curious about how our government works and what it's like to be a citizen of Vietnam and I'm happy to answer them. But then there are comments like this. Uh, you keep using that word socialism, I'm not sure you know what it means. Vietnam is not a socialist country. I happen to be an expert on Vietnam. I've never been there before. I don't know anything about the culture. I certainly don't speak Vietnamese. But I've spent hours on Reddit threads reading about Vietnam from other white leftists. And I'm here to tell you, I know about Vietnam. I know about socialism. Vietnam is not socialist. Stop saying Vietnam is socialist. Vietnam is not socialist. Blah! Remember, kids, read it, not even once. Okay, so a lot of white leftists like to try to teach me about my own country. And I am not saying that I am right about my country just because I am Vietnamese. But I do want to point out that I know a lot of things you couldn't possibly know because I speak Vietnamese. <laughs> Unfortunately, there are a lot of information sources on Vietnam that have never been translated into English. And of course, I have had the experience of growing up in this country and living here for almost 30 years. So, finally, I am going to try to answer the most frequently asked question I get on my channel. Is Vietnam socialist? So, sit back, relax, and get ready for a whole bunch of boring history and theory. Ugh. As you know, right now, the COVID-19 pandemic is getting worse and worse every day, especially in developed capitalist countries like the USA and many countries in Europe. And luckily, Vietnam is one of a few countries doing a pretty good job at containing the COVID-19 virus. In my recent videos, I have been trying to explain why Vietnam is doing such a great job even though we are a poor developing country. Of course, there are many reasons, but in my opinion, the most important one is socialism. <laughs> Vietnam is a socialist country. You're wrong! Vietnam is not socialist! Okay, okay, we heard you the first time. Look, I know that a lot of you are skeptical about socialism in Vietnam. People on the left say that Vietnam isn't really socialist. We are state capitalist and we are no different than any other capitalist country. People on the right say that everything that's good about Vietnam is because of capitalism and everything that's bad about Vietnam is communism. I have to deal with comments like this every single day. <sighs> There's just so much misunderstanding about socialism in Vietnam. But before I can tell you why I believe Vietnam is a socialist country, we have to talk about the word socialism. What is socialism? Well, it is complicated because lots of different individuals and ideologies have different definitions of socialism. Even famous socialists at different points in history have defined the word socialism in different ways. Even Karl Marx, Vladimir Lenin, and Ho Chi Minh, three of the most important socialists in history, had different definitions of socialism. First, let's look at Marx. Marx's ideas about socialism are pretty complicated, and people have argued about what he meant when he talked about socialism for over a hundred years now. But basically, he believes that after capitalism is overthrown, we cannot just go directly to the stateless and classless society of communism. He believes that there would have to be a transition period where workers would have to move from having a state to having no state. 
It shouldn't just be the old state with new leaders from the working class. It should be the totally different government with new rules and new values. Marx sometimes talk about the dictatorship of the proletariat, and this term gets misunderstood a lot. A lot of capitalism proponents say that this means that socialism is dictatorship. But what Marx really meant was that instead of having a minority of capitalists being dictators over the majority of the working class people, the working class majority should be in control of society until all classes have been eliminated. So this transition period from having a state to statelessness is what Marx called socialism. This is pretty complicated, and I'm definitely simplifying things. But that's the basic idea from Marx. Now let's talk about Vladimir Lenin, whose writing was also very influential for Vietnam's development. Lenin also said that socialism is a transition state away from capitalism. Lenin wrote that socialism will defeat capitalism because it can create a democratic society that is a million times more democratic and productive than bourgeois democracy. Lenin wrote that he wanted the USSR to be a socialist state that would defeat capitalism. Now you can agree or disagree with whether or not the USSR actually accomplished these goals. That's not what we're talking about here. We are talking about Vietnam, and you can't talk about Vietnamese socialism without talking about Ho Chi Minh. Ho Chi Minh read Marx and Lenin and many other socialist writers extensively, and he then went on to develop his own definition of socialism for Vietnam. This is important to understand. Ho Chi Minh's definition of socialism was specifically developed for Vietnam and Vietnam only. He said. I want to explain it in a simple way that is easy for you to understand. Socialism is a society which continuously enhances the physical and the spiritual life of the people, for most the workers. He also said that turning a society like Vietnam had into a socialist society is not easy, and the most important factor in that transformation is to turn the working class into socialist people with socialist ideology and values and manners. This is one of the most important points of Ho Chi Minh ideology about Vietnam's revolutionary path. As you know, Vietnam won the war with the USA in 1975, and you know what? Right after they left, the USA set a comprehensive embargo on Vietnam. Vietnam was devastated. The USA and its allies had bombed us into Stone Age for decades, and right at the moment we got our independence, America forced the whole world to turn their backs on us. The USSR at that time was the only country on earth that tried to help us. They sent us food, fertilizer, machines, and more. They helped train Vietnamese engineers because our education system was destroyed and we barely had any schools left. In fact, my dad was one of about 200 lucky Vietnamese engineers and workers who got a chance to be educated and trained in the USSR from 1975 to 1978. I recently interviewed my dad about these experiences, and I will translate them and post them here soon. Anyway, I know many of you have a lot of criticisms for the USSR. I have lots of criticisms of the USSR myself. But it is undeniable fact that they were the only powerful nation in the world that was willing to help Vietnam until the 80s. So for 10 years after gaining our independence, we tried to build a full communist society. We tried to nationalize every business, try to avoid using cash. My mom was trained there at that time, and she described it like this. People in her village worked together and shared everything. There was no salary, but instead, she received stamps every month. She brought those stamps to the grocery stores to exchange for food, clothes, fertilizer, and so on. She said everyone was poor AF, but it was also a fun and less stressful time to be alive. In my opinion, that system could have totally succeeded if our country had enough natural resources, decent infrastructure, and if our people had access to advanced education. And most importantly, it could have succeeded if the world agreed to trade with us just like any other normal nation. But sadly, the reality at that time was nothing like that. 
Actually, the situation Vietnam had to deal with in the 70s and 80s made the decision of building a full communist society from scratch all by ourselves in a hostile world became impossible because we barely had any natural resources left, especially when Asian Orange was spread all over the south of Vietnam to destroy our water, forests, and crops. For anyone who might not know about this, the USA sprayed 80 million liters of toxic poison into Vietnam. 61% of the poison was Asian Orange, which included over 366 kilograms of dioxin, one of the most poisonous substances that humans have ever known of. You can kill 8 million people with just 85 grams of dioxin. At the same time, they bombed the north of Vietnam to the Stone Age. And the consequence was that many cities, such as my hometown, had to totally rebuild everything. In my hometown of Thanh Hoa, almost all the buildings are pretty new compared to many other parts of Vietnam. And yeah, it's because my hometown was completely flattened by USA bombs. So. Building a full communist society was extremely difficult. Building any kind of society would have been difficult in those circumstances. Our government would later admit that, at that time, they lacked experience and rushed too quickly to build a perfect society, which was impractical given the material of conditions of our nation. Remember, right after our war with the USA, we had to go right into another war with the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia. Cambodia had a terrible dictator named Pot Pot who was murdering Cambodian and Vietnamese civilians. Over the course of three years, from 1975 to 1978, Pot Pot invaded and tortured and killed thousands of Vietnamese citizens for no reason. Vietnamese leaders back then tried so hard to negotiate with them peacefully, but they refused to listen. In 1979, Pompo sent nearly 190,000 soldiers to invade the south of Vietnam and we had no choice but to fight back. For the next six years, the Khmer Rouge was backed by the USA, China, and Thailand. This horrible regime killed millions of people in both Cambodia and Vietnam. So Vietnam, which was already in very bad condition because of our war with the USA, suddenly had to send thousands of soldiers to Cambodia to fight Pol Pot's forces. It was a dark time, and Vietnam got badly treated by the whole world. Once again, powerful wealthy nations were working together to hurt Vietnam. But you know what? Vietnam was the only country in the world who actually helped Cambodia at that time. And ironically, we got terribly punished and mistreated by the rest of the world for doing that. Because many countries back then wanted the Khmer Rouge to win and Vietnam to lose, so there would be no chance for our communist society to succeed. Well, lucky for us, Vietnam won and the Khmer Rouge had to run away and many of their leaders were brought to the International Court of Justice. Actually, if you want to know more about this, Check the links in the description and the movie made by Angelina Zoli. First, they killed my father. So long story short, in the 80s, China, Western countries, and ASEAN countries took that as an excuse to isolate, blockade, and set a comprehensive embargo on Vietnam. And if that wasn't enough, as soon as we finished our fight with Pol Pot in the late 80s and early 90s, the USSR was collapsing. <sighs> Our one true friend now could not help us anymore. They could not even help themselves. So we had to find our own way to survive while the USA and the rest of the world put severe pressure on us. That was why we implemented the Doimai reforms. The Doimai reforms were a series of reforms that took place in the early 90s in Vietnam. According to the Vietnam Communist Party, Doimai reforms are defined as the transition from a subsidized, centralized, planned economy into a multi-element commodity economy. It follows market mechanism under the management of the government and it is socialist-oriented. Why did we do this? 
Was it because we suddenly realized that capitalism is superior to communism? No, the reasons are complicated and include external pressures and internal struggles going all the way back to our wars with uh, France, Japan, and the USA. We had defeated the capitalists in military war, but they kept fighting us with financial warfare and without any allies, it was too much for us to overcome. In addition to supporting Pol Pot against us, the USA also enforced massive embargoes on us. And of course, the capitalist institutions of the world also contributed to this war against Vietnamese socialism. Financial and economic institutions like the World They are imperialistic institutions that force capitalism on independent nations. They do this by offering loans and financial support to developing nations, but only on the condition that they deregulate markets and let more capitalism enter our borders. Here is a chart from the World Bank as some of the requirements that the World Bank makes. Dismantle collective agriculture in favor of system with individual families as a basic unit. Liberalize domestic rice trade. Remove virtually all administered prices. Reduce size of civil service. Eliminated many trade barriers, including most import quotas. Shift the decision about foreign trade from state to enterprise level allowed increasing numbers of enterprises to engage directly in the international trade. So the World Bank forced the Vietnam government to give more power to capitalist companies and specifically foreign-owned companies. In other words, they wanted to increase the power of rich countries to imperialize Vietnam. And if Vietnam refused, they would not get any economic help at all. Vietnam had to do what the World Bank told us to do because we were in a desperate situation. Of course, it's not just the World Bank. Look at what IMF, the International Monetary Fund, asked us to do before they would lend our nation any money. Going forward, to reap the full benefits from Vietnam's increasing economic and financial integration, the government will need to continue to invest in essential public infrastructure especially in sectors in which there is little scope for commercially viable private investment. They said that we have to invest in public infrastructure. This sounds good, right? Of course, it's good for any country to invest in public infrastructure. But then they sneak this in immediately. At the same time, remaining regulatory constraints that may hamper investment in projects that could be of interest to domestic or foreign private investors need to be removed. You see, capitalism doesn't give anything to anyone for free. Everything comes at a price, and wealthy imperialist nations always get the better deal. But I'm not finished yet. IMF also required Vietnam to spend less money on our own citizens' well-being. Minimizing the total amount of government spending. Minimizing government spending on subsidies. Minimizing the government's wage bill. Minimizing civil service pensions and social security spending. Wealthy capitalist institutions demand developing nations to severely neglect our own people in exchange for receiving desperately needed finances. And remember, these are loans that must be paid back with interest. This isn't charity. It's financial warfare. It's a form of violence. Many people died around the world because of these enforced austerity measures and these predatory loans. In 2007, we became a member of WTO, the World Trade Organization. Sounds like progress, huh? But actually, this was what we had to do as a member. We had to lower the import tax, even down to 0% for many essential products such as machines, cars, motorbikes, alcoholic drinks, meat, medicines, and so on. Maybe for the first 5 seconds when you read this, you might think it's a good thing because uh, imported products would be cheaper and consumer can have more choices. Free market! Awesome, right? But no, it's not. For example, lower the import taxes on cars will make the price cheaper and lots of people will buy cars. But actually, our infrastructure is still not advanced enough for that many cars. 
Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh city street plans were designed for only a few thousand cars, not millions. Our government had very high luxury taxes on cars because they were trying to keep cars import at a pace that infrastructure improvement could handle. Having more cars when we don't have the proper infrastructure causes major traffic jams, and that's exactly what's happening in many big cities in Vietnam, especially Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City. Remember, Vietnam has always had good public transportation. We are also a motorbike culture, and many of our roads are designed specifically for motorbikes. They just aren't wide enough for thousands of cars to be clogging them up. Of course, it would be nice to improve that infrastructure, but that takes time and money. Vietnam's government was using luxury tax on car imports to fund that infrastructure improvement, but now we don't have that option and it's much more difficult to manage. Lowering import taxes also encourages people to import more, and this leads to trade deficit. This means our economy will have to depend on other countries. This is a key component of imperialism, forcing us to export our goods to the rest of the world as cheaply as possible, while increasing our dependence on rich developed capitalist countries. Capitalists call this competition, but they fail to mention that the competition is always reached in their favor. So, by the early 90s, we began to realize that we just could not have our perfect communist society in the situation we were forced into. Our infrastructure never recovered from the devastating wars against France, Japan, and the USA, and Cambodia, and even the invasion from China in 1979. We were in a desperate situation, and we were all on our own. We just didn't have the resources to build the society we wanted to live in, but we still didn't want to live in a capitalist society. The Doi Mer reforms were seen as the only choice we had left to resist capitalism. We had to move to a system that combines socialist principles with capitalist reforms. We had to let some elements of capitalism in to survive and to get the rest of the world to trade with us but we still didn't give up on our true target, communism. So anyway, that's why we had the Doi Mer reforms. It wasn't because we loved capitalism. It was because if we didn't do at least some of what capitalist nations were forcing us to do, we would have been destroyed. So it's totally understandable that now many of you see Vietnam as a mixture of socialism, communism, and capitalism. And Lenin foresaw this situation and he mentioned it in some of his books. According to Lenin, in order to gain that target, we had to pass through a transitional period, which he called socialism. Our Doimer reforms were based on the Lenin's new economic policy, also called NEP. I put the link in the description if you want to know more about this. So again, we had to let capitalism in so we could survive. And according to the Vietnam Communist Party, we are now in a transitional period toward communism, and we call this transitional period socialism. That's why Vietnam is called the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. But it's not just some name we call ourselves. We are working hard to make our society more socialistic all the time, and our government is officially committed to strive toward communism. The official ideology of Vietnam is still Marxist-Leninism and Ho Chi Minh taught. But what does that mean exactly? Well, the government of Vietnam has eight official directions for our society. The Communist Party believes that moving in these directions will lead us toward communism. 1. To have a modern economy with educated people, protection of our natural resources, and protection of our environment. 2. Develop a socialism-oriented market economy. 3. Build a Vietnamese culture that keeps our good traditions and enhances the life of the people and promotes social justice. 4. To assure public security, national security, and public order. 5. To deal with foreign countries peacefully, democratically, and cooperatively. 6. To build democratic socialism with national unity. 7. To build a lawful socialist government that exists for and belongs to the people in accordance with Marxist principles. 8. To build a pure and strong communist party. 
We are building the infrastructure for this, and unfortunately, because we are a developing country, it will take more time to build these things. Our goal is to have all of these goals fulfilled by 2050, and then we will begin trying to transition fully towards a stateless, classless communist society. As evidence that we are striving for a more socialist society, here are some socialistic programs that work well in Vietnam. We have effective price stabilization programs on food and other material needs. Check my videos for more details. We have affordable health care and education systems. We have nearly 25,000 worker-owned cooperatives all over Vietnam, including agricultural cooperatives, transportation cooperatives, and small-scale industry cooperatives. About 50% of farms in Vietnam are collectively owned with over 6 million members of cooperative farms. Government now owns nearly 700 companies in essential fields such as internet, electricity, water, gasoline, road construction, and so on. That's why the internet, water, electricity, and gasoline are pretty cheap here. There are a lot of benefits if you join a cooperative, and the government has been encouraging more and more people to join and start cooperatives. For example, if you want to open an individual-owned transportation company, it is very difficult for you to ask for a business license and also there are many other kinds of paperwork. It is very complicated, but if you join a transportation cooperative, you will get help with all of this. The government will help you deal with paperwork, help you manage your finances, give you advice about your business and so on. Actually, it is a way for our government to encourage people to join the cooperative by making the paperwork easier for cooperative members. Another example, my mom is a farmer. She also joined a cooperative in her village. So, anytime there has been a dangerous rice disease, she gets informed and advised about the right pesticide to deal with it. And if she doesn't have enough money to buy fertilizer or rice for the next crop, she can always go to the cooperative and ask for help. And by joining the cooperative, she also benefits from the Rice Price Stabilization Program. It helps farmers and consumers in Vietnam. Again, if you want to know how this program protects farmers, check the video I made about it. Earlier in this video, I mentioned how Ho Chi Minh believed that the most important thing about creating a socialist society was having socialist people to build the society. Well, even today, Vietnam is working hard to develop socialist values in our society. Every school in Vietnam teaches Marxism, Leninism, and Ho Chi Minh thought. Primary schools, high schools, even my business university all require instruction on socialist theory and philosophy. I studied socialist theory from the time I was 6 years old until I graduated from college. Socialist instruction starts with meaningful stories for kids, then develops into more former Marxist, Leninist, Ho Chi Minh ideology coursework in universities and colleges. These are considered essential classes and students have to pass if they want to graduate. So every single Vietnamese person is officially trained in Marxism, Leninism and Ho Chi Minh thought as a student. So it shouldn't surprise you that our Vietnam National Assembly brings up Marx, Lenin and Ho Chi Minh and the USSR in nearly every meeting. Là cái sự đổ vỡ của Đông Âu và Liên bang Xô Viết, cái nguyên nhân trực tiếp và nguyên nhân chính ấy, là cái việc chúng ta là chậm phát hiện được sai lầm và họ chậm sửa chữa sai lầm và cái chính là và cái những người đứng đầu ấy là đã xa rời chủ nghĩa Mark Lenin sau đó xa rời nguyên lý của chủ nghĩa Mark Lenin. Sau... Yes, we do have a few liberal leaders who worship capitalism, but most of us are still very Marxist and Leninist. If you want to learn more about that. I have a couple of videos on our National Assembly. I will link them in the description. For Vietnamese people, socialistic values are an essential part of who we are. Throughout 4,000 years of Vietnamese history, I am confident to tell you that Vietnamese people have always been very socialist in nature. We have deep socialist roots in our culture and history. 
We were socialist since even before the term the word socialist was invented. Vietnamese people have always been very collectivist. We have a tradition of helping each other, caring about each other, and put the group's benefits higher than the individual's benefits. We've been taught that selfishness and individualism was bad, and we should act based on the benefits of other people. Ho Chi Minh even had a quote about this. A nation, a party, a person could have been great yesterday, but today they might stop being loved and praised if their hearts are not pure anymore, if they sink into individualism. I agree with Ho Chi Minh. Of course, I think that everybody should have freedom and we should be allowed to freely express ourselves and live our lives as we choose as long as we aren't hurting anyone else. Individualism should never be the main principle to run a society. That's something most of us Vietnamese agree on. Here's Ho Chi Minh again. Individualism is to care about your own benefits only, no matter how it affects the community. It's like saying, I'm wealthy so I don't care about poor people. Individualism causes laziness, comparison, haughtiness, jealousy, corruption. It is the evil enemy of the revolutionist morals of socialism. Individualism is not human nature. It was developed artificially in societies where a small number of people own the means of production, where a group of people hold all the power, where people enslave other people for profits, where people put their own benefits above everyone's benefits. Human beings, like other animals, are much more inclined to work mutual aid when we aren't forced into desperate circumstances like capitalism causes. I really believe that. My partner EJ has done some great videos on the science of mutual aid, so I will link those in the description. If you want a very strong evidence that Vietnamese people are intrinsically socialist and collectivist, just look what's happening right now in this pandemic. Vietnamese people are willing to wear masks and stay indoors without protest, unlike many people in the USA and the Europe. Why? Everybody knows that wearing masks is very uncomfortable and inconvenient. And it's the fact that young people might overcome the disease easily. So why should they care and sacrifice their own convenience? That's the individualist mindset. Most Vietnamese people know that nobody can be sure if they have the virus or not. So, in order to protect other people, the ones we love, we are willing to sacrifice our own individual pleasure to protect our community. We don't do these things just to protect ourselves. It's not out of selfishness. Most Vietnamese people genuinely want to protect other people. We even give free testing and food and shelter to foreigners in quarantine. We are doing our best to make everyone comfortable and safe in these very hard times. But even before this emergency, there has been a lot of evidence of our socialistic culture in Vietnam. We have a community gardens everywhere. If there is empty land in a street or a village, people just go there and grow their vegetables and share them together. For example, my mom's house is located near the medical center of her village, and they have a huge garden there. Of course, my mom and her neighbors and the doctors working there decided to grow vegetables and even medical plants together. The doors are always open to everybody. Community gardens are something so normal in Vietnam that nobody even questioned it. It's obvious, you see an empty space, you grow food there. It has been like that for hundreds, even thousands of years. I've heard from some people in my audience that in the USA, it is illegal to grow a community garden on empty land and you could get arrested for trespassing. And some rich people who make community gardens in the USA get angry because homeless people are stealing vegetables. That's totally strange to me. I can't imagine someone getting arrested for growing food or having a community garden than getting upset when hungry people take the food you're growing. Our local governments in Vietnam even encourage people to use the empty land around their homes to grow food. And they even provide free advice and seeds and nets and other equipment to community gardeners. I will post a link in the description, but unfortunately, it's in Vietnamese. There are so many other examples of our socialistic culture and socialism in our government. But if I try to list them all in this one video, it would just take way too long. 
For now, I hope you can see that Vietnam is really in the transitional period of socialism. Vietnamese people are socialist and collectivist in our hearts. We have many socialist programs. We have thousands of cooperatives employing millions of people. And we also have many anti-imperialist programs to fight many big international corporations. I will make more videos talking about these things in detail soon, so please be patient. So yeah, to me, Vietnam meets all the basic requirements to be a socialist country. It's definitely not perfect. It has many, many problems. And most of the problems come from capitalism. But we are still trying our best to help our people to lead the country to our true target, communism. It will be a long time to get there, we know, but we will forever keep our hope and keep working towards the goals of communism, hopefully before our official deadline of 2050. We are working hard today so our descendants can have a better future. Anyway, wherever you are, I hope you stay safe and take care of each other. Thanks for watching everybody. If you have any question or idea, leave them in the comments. See you next week. Bye-bye. Oh, I can't believe there's a new video saying Vietnam is socialist from the internet. Time to comment. Vietnam is not socialist. Stop saying Vietnam is socialist. I learned on Reddit that Vietnam is not socialist. Socialism is not what Vietnam is, you fake fucking leftist. I hate everybody.